What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Why We Love PlayStation VR. Sitting all the way across the city from me this week and every week, he's the king of all VR kings. He's the Jack Skelling King. Oh, that didn't work at all. It's Jeremy King. You know, good thing I know the reference, but still, I have yet to see that movie. Yeah, and all the way it. across the city, who has already seen a movie that I haven't. How rare is that? Usually, the, it's very opposite. It is Brian Paul. And every week hey. I watch PlayStation VR. We dip into the PSVR archive. We pull out a game at random. We dust the blow off it. We play the crap out of it. We see if it's been given any love by developers, any updates, any DLC. And then we let yep. you know, the loyal game cats. Well, if it's worth your time. Um, Jeremy, I'm so glad we get to play this game. It's so spooky. It's, we're, we're rounding out spooky okay. month. What game did we decide to play this week? Title so long I had to write this one down. It's Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion HD Renovation VR. Nice. Did I get it all? Yeah, I don't. Is there actually a the VR moment? at the end of it? Did I miss no, the title? I felt, I felt like throwing it in there because usually when I don't, it has one. So of I figured course. why not throw it in there? See yeah. what happens. Spooky's yeah. Jump Scare Mansion colon HD Renovation VR added by the Soap King himself by Albino Moose Games. Uh, released on October 28th, 2019, almost exactly a year ago uh, from mm. the time that this video goes up for $9.99. And do you know what that is? Upside down? 666. Wow. Oh, spooky. I know I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. Yes. Right? You know, Tornado, her, her pupils have been all black dilated, right? Yeah. It's a little dark in here. And she looks like she's mm -hmm. possessed all the time. It's really cool. Dark inside a cat's soul. And <laughs> you were ready to springboard. To say, what kind of game is Bookie Jump Scare Mansion HD Renovation VR? Uh, <laughs> survival? I don't know. What, what do you want to call it? it it's like a survival. It, it's you gotta get from room to room and escape the creepy things. Yeah, I think we'll I think we'll steal last week's description. We'll say it's a haunted house game. We'll use AJ's description, the run for your life simulator. I really like that one. <laughs> and this yeah, one especially yeah. feels like a run for your life simulator, right? Oh yeah, totally. You can play this game in VR and non-VR. Requires the Dual Shock 4. Uh, maybe we'll talk mm -hmm. a little bit more about that in a minute. Uh, but three modes to pick from right off the bat. Uh, I think I forget what the original one's called. It's just original. And then we've got Endless in Karamari yeah. Hospital. Yeah. So let's tackle original, man. Tell tell me sure. tell tell me what happens right after you pick original from the title screen. What? Well, it seems so goddamn long ago to know what happens right after. Hundreds of rooms but, ago. Yeah, literally a thousand rooms ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I don't remember what happens right off the bat besides the fact you're introduced to this, like, friendly, happy little ghost lady who basically says that you got to kind of, what, get through a thousand rooms to escape the mansion or the whatever you're in. Yeah. The hell. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. And then you just start moving forward. That's right. Pretty typical first-person yeah. shooter controls, right? Like you're just using the yeah. analog sticks and you're looking around with your head, and it's kind of it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fairly and, basic. And you're like, I gotta get through a thousand rooms, and the counter yeah. starts, and the, you go through the first door, and it's like one. And you're like, oh no, wait, really? A thousand rooms? And then the next room you walk through, pretty damn small. Within seconds, right? You're just like, I'm just gonna yeah. run from the beginning of it to the end of it. It's literally two mm -hmm. or three seconds from door to door, and then you open that door, and it goes two. And you're like, oh, wow. This is gonna be quite yeah. a haul. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's hard to say how many rooms per minute you can get through, but <laughs> would you, on average, would you say three? Three rooms a minute? Oh, maybe? I, I would say many Four? more than that. I would say yeah. upwards of like 10 rooms a minute for the first like for the first hundred or so yeah true see yeah that, that's right i forget it was so long ago because <laughs> later on it gets a little bit more plus you know it gets a little more complicated as you go but uh sometimes it's even backtracking you know like in the, the hospital one so this isn't called this isn't called jump scare mansion for no reason no what did no, it is tell not. me about the early jump scares in this game oh this is so basic the uh, there's like little little cardboard cutouts, if you will, that pop out of the uh, walls as you're walking. Really basic, and they're like happy ones, like yeah. ice cream cones and shit. You know, they're not like scary things. And like, oh, 
that wasn't too scary. It'd be like, Bee! you know. Right. Even when it's a skeleton or something that's supposed to be scary, it's very much like bargain bin uh, outlet from the, you know, from the ghetto Halloween store down the street. It's the bargain yeah. bin crap. Cardboard cutouts that fling out from the wall in front of you. You never see them coming. No. Right? And they, they're always accompanied by a sound effect. So, mm-hmm. and, and of course, everything makes me jump because I'm a scaredy cat. <laughs> um, and in yeah. VR, everything, you know, is more intense and everything's better. Oh, yeah. um, and everything's scarier. Did they make you jump? At first, yes, they made me jump at first. I can't say that I didn't get used to them or the scare factor on those cardboard things wore off, but the developers knew this. So they started, they get, they make things really kind of fucked up, you know, and trippy, if you will, at at a certain point. So they know you're going to get bored with that simple shit. Right. At the, at the beginning, everything, even the walls and the ground, it's like got this really cell shaded or cartoon look to it. Right. Like real yeah. simple, almost like Wolfenstein 3D. Mm. Like, it just has that yeah. really basic hallway look to it. Yep. And the sprites, they, they're like Disgaea characters, you know, like all the things that pop out at you. It's like you're playing the Disgaea game with the, uh, what are they, Prinnies? Is yeah. that the penguins? The Prinnies? Absolutely. So almost like that type of a look to aesthetic to the the, the ghost lady and the pop outs, you know, yeah. at but, first. And it, but then it doesn't take too long. As you said, things get a little bit more intense. Uh, so the environments get a little bit darker, a little bit more mysterious. Um, mm-hmm. There were certainly some that looked straight out of like the bad areas of Silent Hill. Like yeah. After yeah. after all the wallpaper tears off the wall and everything turns red <laughs> and there's there's yeah. like big fans and steam coming from the vents in the in the, in the floor like there's entire yeah. areas that look just like that. Yeah, like green pools of goo on the ground that when you run you slow down through them, you know. So things get weird. Right. Bats and, with like brains in them that look like uh, Metroids or whatever, you know. Uh, just um, science experiments and jars and and whatnot. It, it gets weird. Yeah, and then you actually start uh, encountering real enemies. What kind of enemies do you remember? The one that made me the most nervous was the puppet or scissor guy. I don't know. He was like a puppet guy, puppet guy and he could hear like stick sounds mm. behind you as you ran. That dude was quick. Like he was on you. You know, it seemed like certain enemies had a certain kind of a... Like there was that staticky lady that had that... Um, sound effect that was almost like an ice cream truck Mm -hmm. kind of a sound you know and she wasn't too bad but at first it was like you know and you'd see her just kind of like floating down the hall at you with that ice cream sound you know and you got to keep plowing through the rooms but that's the the, that's where the stamina comes into play because you have a sprint button to kind of hurry up and get through a room which resets your stamina so you try to quickly run as much as you can and utilize the stamina to get to that other room so your stamina refreshes and continue to run away from the enemy that's following behind you. Um, but the stamina runs out quick, and some of the rooms are a lot longer than other rooms to get through. So um, you got to, I don't know, I can't say you got to strategically find a way away from these enemies because I found that I built no strategy. Every time I saw one, fight or flight, on the, all I knew is I got to run, you know, and that's that was it. And I would like run into corners and be like, oh, my God, I got to get away and I'm trapped. <laughs> and it don't take long and you're dead. And then you got to start all those rooms over again. Yeah. 50, right? It's a reset of 50. Like once you get halfway through, there's the uh, the safe area, correct? Or is it 100? I'm forgetting. Yeah. Now. It's a good blur. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a little while for me. Um, and yeah. it's the safe area. Uh, it, I found it a little fascinating that there were safe areas because, of course, this is there are leaderboards and it's like and so not only is it about how quickly or how many rooms you can survive, but it's also how quickly you can get through them. Uh, yeah. So you do want to just be like plowing your way through them. You don't want to be taking your time, and you can't take your time because the enemies are after you. So all the enemies are specimens for the most part. They're they're all specimens, and you can actually, as you go through the game, there are like little pieces of paper that you can pick up, little oh, documents, yeah. and you start reading about them. And uh, and even there, at one point, you get to uh, like a lab or something, and there's a computer screen where mm-hmm. you can like go through all the specimens, and it will yeah. give you descriptions of them, and you can sort of decipher what you're supposed to do um, to survive those encounters by reading those descriptions. Um, mm-hmm. the, uh, the puppeteer guy or the puppet, not the puppeteer, I guess he is a puppet, right? With knives. Um, yeah. I, I, 
I always think that you have to you have to like stare at him, like you have to like just go you know walk backwards um, and, and keep an eye on him, uh, and then yeah. and, and then he I doesn't right. he doesn't attack you as frequently that way. So if you if you get you know go through the room fast enough, you can get through it. Um, mm -hmm. And then there's other ones that like you can't get too far away from because if you get too far away from them, then they're able to attack you. But if you if you keep them at a reasonable distance, like kind of close, they'll just keep coming at you and, without attacking. And so you have to read through all of these things and you have to figure out. Um, so you can either read through them or you can just die and learn from experience. Um, that's what I did. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and that's the funny thing because I read them too. I read them. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. And then uh, again, when it came time to confront them, it was like, I got to run, you know? And I just, did you find that sometimes you would get <laughs> the enemies in your mind from Dread Halls and this game confused because they had a very similar feel. So it's like, oh, where's the weird hairless mouse thing? And you're like, wait, that's Dread Halls, not this game. Because yeah. they have, they, they definitely have that perusing the, the halls type of a feel to it. Like, where are they? The enemies somewhere around here. Yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. Yeah. I, I didn't get the enemies confused, but I definitely see the Dread Halls comparison. It is, mm -hmm. it is basically like a more adorable Dread Halls. Oh yeah, yeah. Because, a little yeah. more family accepting, you know. Family accepting, but I mean, shit gets really dark by oh, the man. end of it. Like, I, I, then, if I had a kid, I wouldn't want uh, him or her playing no. this game past like level one hundred. I don't think. Yeah, and the load screens, or the excuse me, the death screens, mm -hmm. they get like really Ren and Stimpy ish. <laughs> Like, there's that one, like, you know, with the eyeball being pinched with the other pin coming down on it. And it's all, like, screechy sound because it gets weird. Like, it can be all cutesy. And then you get into certain rooms and there'll be, like, the sound effects of somebody screaming over and over, looped in with blood just flowing up to the ceiling above this bed thingy. And, and you're like, what the fuck is this shit? Yeah. And then when you die at certain areas, it, it's like fucked up messages written across the screen with all like weird, you know, in your head, trippy experience visually on the screen for you to view. It, it's really, it gets really weird, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, at first yeah. it just seems like a cute Halloween game, like a, like a, like mm -hmm. you said, family friendly. And then like shit hits the fan and it is, it is, yeah. it's, it gets scary uh and which is which is crazy i think it's to the developer's credit to say that despite these really kind of simple looking graphics even when like things get dark and like i said silent hillish um or just mm -hmm. like psychedelic at certain points like the whole the walls the textures in the walls are just moving all oh, over the move. place yeah and, and as easy it is is just to, ho to hold forward on the analog stick i still had a problem walking in a straight line <laughs> yeah you're like the oh door. my god yeah right. it gets you like like the barrel rooms in those fun houses when you were a kid yeah and you'd be walking you're like oh my god <laughs> it did the same thing like and i'm like come on dude the door's right there everything right. just looks like it's moving and i would be like oh my god I'm, where am i yeah, yeah. so it's to so developers credit wacky. that they were able to you know use these limited resources and make it a very very effectively scary game um mm -hmm. And, and then we we haven't even talked about some of the later rooms. So you're, you're blasting through and, and you're like, okay, room one, room two, room three, room four, and just knocking yeah. them out one by one by one. No enemies, nothing to worry about. Some cardboard cutouts. And you're like, ah, no, no big deal. You know, like, well, mm -hmm. I mean, they scared me, but, you know, most people are just going to be like, oh, run around. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you're just knocking these things out. You know, you get to you get to room 150 and you're like, this is easy. I'm already 15% of the way there. No big deal. And then you yeah. hit up and then you walk into a room and it's like totally different. Yeah, yeah, you're like, that's oh, it. Oh, this is the entrance of a mansion. Yeah, and, and you walk into the next room, and the in the 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 room counter doesn't tick up. And mm -hmm. you walk into the next room, and the room counter doesn't tick up. And then mm -hmm. you start realizing that this entire mansion is one room, or, or is going to count as one room at the end of the yeah. day. And then you have to walk around. You have to avoid a, a monster who's trying to kill you in this mansion while trying to figure out. Uh, you know, which room to go to, how to unlock each room. You keys, know, he's finding keys, emblems, or sometimes things you got to insert into walls and very resident evil. Stuff. Yeah, it, it's just so putting on generators to generate, and you know, because certain doors will be electronically controlled. It definitely changes. Yeah. And so 20 yeah. minutes later, you finally get to the exit of this mansion, and then it's like, room 151 and you're like i just yeah. got through one room in 20 minutes this is gonna take forever and how, yeah. i mean how many times has that happened i mean quite yeah, a few uh, right several yeah quite a quite a few yeah yeah and it's, it's almost refreshing i think i think it's almost refreshing when it happens because you're going and you're just like moving at such a 
quick pace that's almost like too easy, kind of boring. You know, it's just like once you've gotten used to something, then they throw this at you. And it's like, oh, you know, and if you read all the pieces of paper that are there, it's I mean, did that, that fast food restaurant. Did you read all the pieces of the paper in the fast food restaurant? I did not, because when I got to the <laughs> fast food restaurant, I started to like just need to hurry up and finish the game. <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. But like all prior, I was invested in reading those pieces of paper, you know, but um, no. So fill me in if you No, I, I'm not. I'm not spoiling anything. This is it's just a messed up story. But you find yourself in uh, in like, I think, was it a ventilation shaft or something or a heating duct? Yeah. After having read everything that up until that point, I don't want to go in this thing. I don't want to see what's around the next corner because I've already got an idea from reading all this. And so it just, yeah. the tension builds and builds and builds. And of course you're there for 20 minutes and then boom, one more room gets checked room. up. Yeah. It's, it, so it's, it's pretty, pretty crazy when it comes down to it. So, so once you beat the, once you beat all thousand rooms of the original uh-huh. mode, then you, I mean, the obvious next choice thing to do is go to the endless mode, um, yeah. which is like, which is basically once you've done the thousand rooms, once you've gone through it all and like kind of seen like the core, you know, this is how this is what the original game is. Like, I really think as far as replayability goes, like the endless mode is where it's at. Because every time you go yeah. through, it's like, oh, wait, I've never seen this before. I've never totally seen this different. over here. Yeah. Right. It's totally different. Yeah. You can start off with an axe. Yeah. Yeah. Right away. It's like, wait a and minute. Like- I, <laughs> an axe would have been amazing in this game. I'm like, I, you don't you don't have any weapons. I don't think we even mentioned that. In the original, no. in the original mode, you don't have any weapons at all. Yeah, I was so confused when I did the endless because, like, I saw the door, and I didn't know how to get in there. And I just randomly, <laughs> I'm like, I started hitting buttons, and then I was like, chop, and I'm like, oh, mm. there we go, chop, chop, and then I opened the door. Even though I just took the, I think it was the axe right off the wall, right next to it. I just, it didn't click. Same. Don't ask. Me, no, the exact know? same thing happened to me too. And this is one of those things where you might, you're not going to want to play this every single day, man. But like no. to just, you know, to pull this game off the shelf uh, once every few months, once a year for for Halloween or Bang something. Hang out a hundred rooms, you know, or so. Yeah. See how far you can make it, man. Like climb you climb that yeah. leaderboard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, but but tell me about tell me about Karamari Hospital because I think this is when like things get really different, really strange. Yeah. Well, it's definitely more like a. I don't want to say story, but a little bit more story-ish, you know, because mm-hmm. you're in one central environment um, for the most part. And um, you just doing a lot of hunting and searching and finding the key cards and the uh, keys and uh, different areas to unlock other rooms. And the basement's really fucked up. <laughs> There's that weird heart valve thingy that goes through the room, oh, the floorboard. I don't know. It, it's, it's, it's weird. I mean, the whole game is weird. But of this course. is more centralized. It's more like a spinoff story or series. Yeah, yeah. You know? I, I think this is this this one actually got me because not only did I find it extremely creepy again, I'm gonna say it a thousand more times. Um, you know, you walk you, you walk through a part of this and there's just body bags everywhere. You're walking through a hospital and so you end, oh, end up in the weird. morgue. Yeah. You know, and it's like how how is this game affecting me so much? Uh, like from a from a from a horror standpoint. Mm-hmm. And, and have it look like the you know the graphics that we're showing, and somehow it yeah. does. I think I think the audio design is fantastic in this game, um, mm. and it just goes to show you that you can have like these really simple graphics, and it, and it just it can still still really get to you. Yeah, I'll say though that the hospital all kind of looks the same. You know, it's like you're just walking down a, a, a corridor, and there's like a bunch of rooms on each side. Some of them are locked, a few of them are unlocked. Some of them you're looking yeah. for keys, and then you what walk into another room. Thing? So disorienting. You know? Yeah. Right. And if I had a better sense of direction or if there was a mini map or something like that, man, I could have I probably would have enjoyed this game, this mode so much more. I agree with you on that, because while I liked it, I started to get over it because I kept opening the same rooms, the same door, finding that key, then being like, OK, maybe it belongs to that room that I couldn't have access to earlier. Where the fuck was that room? Where's that room? Walking all through the rooms again looping around looping around trying somewhere different it was like trial and errors to the point that i think it took me three times longer than it actually should if i had a map or if i sketched out a map as i played it because right. it, it definitely uh yeah it, it, that's the problem with the simple graphics is that it, it, it while it's it's fine and it gets you through it also makes it challenging to know your place in the map you know where you've been and where you haven't been because it's all the same 
you know right it's not it's not even terribly big to be honest with you it's you should be able to get through all of Karamari Hospital in like an hour. And that's a mm. lot of backtracking and, and experimenting and being like, oh, I have this key. As Jeremy said, I have no idea which door it fits in. It's been, <laughs> yeah. it's been 10 minutes since I've seen that locked door and all the locked doors look exactly the same. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, a number of times I trekked through the basement and was just like, oh my God, yeah. Right? It's like, oh, there's still nothing to do down here. Crap, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so even though I really like the change of pace, uh, mm -hmm. I, I think for my, for myself personally, uh, I, I just wish I was better at that kind of stuff. Um, I always make fun of Silent Hill games, how they're all kind of the same. You're constantly pulling out the map and going, well, this room's right next to this room. And even though I can get in this room, of course, yeah. the door that connects those rooms is locked or broken or something. Mm -hmm. And I have to go all the way around somehow to get. And so and, and this kind of has that feeling. But yeah. at least Silent Hill gives you the fucking map. <laughs> Get the map right there, right? yeah. So you never have and then, to, yeah. And, and it always draws a squiggly line over the doors you can't yeah. get through. I, I need yeah. that. I need squiggly lines yeah. in this game, yeah. right? Instead of that Popeye dude that perused those halls, like, right? Didn't he look like Popeye? I guess, yeah. Yeah, and then there was a body bag dude with that looked like an alien inside of the body bag. But uh, yeah, there was some fucked up shit. I would rather a map, yeah. you know, than those enemies after. The I guess I guess the final part of our little discussion here should be that um, we were holding off on this all month long because on October first, yeah, we were supposed to get the Dollhouse yeah. DLC uh, over on Steam. It go, it goes for four dollars. So I'm very very curious to see what this is all about. And the trailer does yeah. like seem like it adds a lot of gameplay elements. Uh, there's like a there's like, you're holding a gun at one point. You are actually holding a doll. The the environments look a lot different. So it seems like they put a lot of time into this DLC. Um, and of course, it's out on PC, but it got delayed on PlayStation. But it could be out literally any time. Like, but it could be out by the time that this video airs. We're filming this on uh, Saturday night, the twenty fourth. Uh, Jeremy, I think we need to rate this sucker. I agree. Yes. What's our rating scale? All right, one. You gotta fucking jump your way to your goddamn PlayStation Network store and download this fucking title because you'll love it. Thousand rooms. Bring them on. Give me 2,000. I'm ready to play this game twice <laughs> over. Uh, two, you know, maybe not jump. Maybe just like, like little skips. Skip over to your PlayStation. Give it some time. Maybe there'll be a sale. I don't know if this title's been on sale before, but give it some time. Maybe it'll be on sale. Who knows? And three, don't skip. Don't jump. Don't do any kind of effort to make any kind of movement. Just fucking sit your ass down and forget about this video game. Don't bother. Just sit and look up at the sky. I don't know. That's free. You'll enjoy it better. So based off of that, one, two, or three, what do you rate this fucking title, Brian Paul? Man, this is one of those games that when when it was first, like in early access or first on PC, I used to watch, I, I don't know if it was Giant Bomb or other PC sites, like actually play it. And I'd be like, oh man, this looks this looks like a lot of fun. It looks stupid and goofy, uh, you know, like really cutesy and, and, and over the top. Um, and, and I didn't even know really like where it went. I just, you know, it always seemed like the first 20 minutes or so uh, being played. And I was like, oh, this would be so cool. Uh, and then uh, and then when it got announced for PlayStation 4 with VR support, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. This is seriously like something never thought would happen. And on top of it, it's like we're getting, you know, the VR element that just makes everything better. Mm -hmm. so i was super excited going into it and i gotta tell you i wasn't disappointed even in the slightest like there's something just goofy and fun about this uh you know all the comfort settings are totally fixable uh you know you get mm -hmm. rid of all the vignettes there's no click turning everything just kind of like looks good it, like nice and sharp in the headset even if they are simple graphics uh it's, like i said the music and the sound effects are really good sometimes you're running down a hallway and you can just hear that monster behind you you can and if you look behind you like you can see him like you know smashing down the door and i was like oh next room next room next room bat mashing on the x button you know it's just it's it's amazing like i'm just like hold i feel like i hold my breath for for a few rooms at a time i'm like come on come on come on come on, come on, come on, come on. you know yeah. the i think there's only like one little thing i don't like about this and it's that there's um is that the, the little reticle in the middle of the screen is your is your health and your stamina and, yeah. I'm, and I much would have preferred that because like whenever you look at a wall, it's sort of like 
flattens up against the wall and you look at the ground it flattens up against that and if you look at a table it yeah. kind of like you know shakes until it like settles onto the tabletop and i'm like that's just kind of distracting you know how much it would have been nice if it was just in the in off in the corner or help get rid of it man like just like, let me have the option of just turning it off completely and go huddle yep. and, and i guess i i checked out my review just before this and i will say that my final little thing because this does have like roguelike elements to it especially you know the, the randomly generated endless mode i really kind of wish there was more of like a spelunky spin on this. You know, you, you'd find stores or something and there were special power-ups that would really, mm. really influence every single run and make every single run different. If you ever played Spelunky, man, if you get the uh, the compass and the jetpack like anywhere early in the game, you are golden. Like, you have got this game. You've got it. You, like, no problem at all. But if you never yeah. get the compass or, or, or the jetpack... You're going to have a tough run, man. It's going to be way, way tougher. You know, there are other things you can get. There are parachutes and, um, and, and like, little, like, ray guns and stuff like that that you can buy, too. Mm -hmm. But, like, but it's a wildly different game when you have to play it that way. Uh, so, but, but that made, that's what's fun about Spelunky. Every time you pick it up, it's basically the same game. But you end up with different items. And, and the, the, the element of chance determines what what your gameplay is going to be like for that entire run and i just wish spookies had something like that to really make every run through a little more special and a little more memorable um but man it's a ten dollar game and it scares the fuck out of me every time i play it and I, and I can't i can't even understand why it's able to do that uh for me man it's a, it's an absolute must have uh i i, I love this game 100 percent. what about you Wow. So that's a, a, a clear one for Brian, huh? Mm -hmm. Nice. So I would say uh, for me, the the simple graphics certainly didn't bother me. I, I enjoyed that because you're right. It did look good, even though it was really basic, you know, and uh, it, it just kind of gave you that that feeling like, look, at it's basic. Therefore, it's going to be basic jump scares, basic kind of, <laughs> yeah. you know, aesthetics to what we're going to do for you. But they get really creative on how they they make you nervous and, and get scared. You know, they get the sound effects. You can hear the different enemies and how they're approaching you from the distance. They get the things that slow you down in the environment with the stamina and the sludge on the ground and things in the environment. So when you're running and you open a door and you want to run again, it's like, oh, there's a green pool here. I got to go this way and this way and over here to get to there. You know, so they keep you constantly thinking and looking around as you're frantically trying to avoid these different enemies plus with the different way that they react to you 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 know which i fail to do uh you gotta think oh this is that popeye dude i gotta you know walk away from him sideways i don't know what it is but you know what i mean there's certain things and i didn't do that i certainly just panicked and ran <laughs> and so i mean it had that nailed where you just kind of like uh and i thought the death screens that's the one thing, the load screens or, or the death screens where they'd have certain things written, it, it would follow you. So like for you to do the reading, you had to like move your eyeballs oh, and yeah. not move your head. So I wish that wasn't like that because some of the things that they said were pretty fucked up and I wanted to read them. Like they had that one little portion, I think it was in the hospital where you found that little Game Boy Advance yeah. and there was like a game within it and there was writing in it and the writing was this small. But if you like squinted and looked and like you could actually read the words on it for this little game and VR, you know, that's pretty tough. Some of the words are just big and blocky and gross. You just gives your headache. But this was like even the small words, you could read it. But um, and the story within there on the piece of the paper was interesting and well written. Um, but, you know, I got to say, with all of that said and done, a thousand for me, you know, is a bit much, you know, to get through. Um, at times it was just, you know, I would die and have to start over like room between three and 400. I don't know why that gave me a tough run. You know, I had to do that several times or whatever the three to three fifty or the 350 to four, whatever, somewhere in there. However, it was broken up. Um, it gave me a little bit of time. Um, and the jump scares started to get less impactful, but they did keep you going because they didn't, you know, they'll, they brought on new things. So I didn't hate it. I didn't like absolutely fall head over heels in love with it, 
I thought it was really good. I thought it was a strong two for me. It was definitely a strong two. Well worth the money. Definitely a game that you could go back to here and there. Um, bang out a few, you know, rooms. Show somebody, oh, this is easy. Here, check it out. And then see how they can get scared a little bit. Because it's not, like, overly scary. It's hidden scary. It's not like, again, like we discussed. Everybody, I don't care how old you are. You go to, say, VR and Resident Evil and go to put it on somebody's head and they're like, I'm not playing that. Right. But if you say Spooky's jump scare, <laughs> they'll be like, oh, let's try it, you know? And right. then all of a sudden they're going to fucking whip the leg. So I, I definitely think it's a strong two for me, yeah. without a doubt. Uh, def- definitely, uh, definitely a lot of fun. And I'm just so sad, man. I'm so sad that the Dollhouse DLC didn't come out because, again, yeah. we, we were purposefully pushing this episode off for weeks saying, well, hopefully it comes out this week. Hopefully it comes out next week. Nope, not out yet. Okay, well, you know what? We still got to do this episode. Um, but yeah, but again, uh, it is not mandatory DLC. It is not, it's not raising the price of the original game or anything like that. Uh, and I think for $10, uh, it's pretty pretty low risk. And uh, and so if you like the original game, hopefully we'll all like the $4 Dollhouse DLC. But right. I guess, I guess I'm going to have to review that on its own. Do a little Let's Play and yeah. do a review when that comes out. Right. I'm curious of all the little updates that this little uh, expansion will have. Yeah, yeah, it looks really good. The, the trailer looks fantastic. I'm very excited for it. Nice. So, all right, man. Listen, I, we don't. This is it, man. This is it for Spooky Month. The, this, another month of spookiness down. This wow. Was, this was the grand finale. So if you've got any yeah. any non scary games for us to play, uh, let us know in the comments below. Even if you've already commented, man, let us know what other games you want us to play. Also, let us know what you thought of Spooky Jump Scare Mansion. Uh, did you play it in VR? Did you play it in non VR? How dare you? Uh, All right. Is is the Dollhouse DLC already out now that we posted this video? Probably. That's how it's been. Is it even scary in non VR? This title. I'm curious. I'm I'm hmm. betting far less so. Right? Yeah. 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 Happy Halloween, everybody. Thank you so much for, for tuning in, hanging out with us for another episode of Why We Love PSBR. That guy's Jeremy King. And that guy is Brian Paul. And we love you all.